In Unigraphics, edge blends are features used to round edges shared by at least two faces. In addition, the edge blend command allows for creation of fillets, which are edge blends that add material to the junction. The edge blend command is accessed from the insert menu under detail features. When the dialog box is displayed, there are four options to choose from. However, before selecting edges, the only option available is constant radius. More than one edge can be selected at once to receive an edge blend. They do not have to be in contact, but all selected edges will belong to the same set and thus the resulting blends will become a single entity and will be edited simultaneously after creation. Therefore, it is good practice to group edge blends into logical sets for easier editing. As always, holding the shift key while clicking will unselect an edge. Once you have chosen your edge set, a radius can be entered in the dialog box for all edges in the You may also drag the radius arrows on screen. You can create multiple sets of blends in the command without having to exit. Do this by selecting Complete Set and Start Next Set, located in the top right corner of the dialog box. After doing this, sets will be shown on screen by a spherical indicator and will also be denoted in the window within the dialog box. Edge sets can be deleted or edited by selecting them from this window. If the display boxes make viewing your part difficult, you can turn this display off by pressing F3 on your keyboard. Pressing this button again will turn the display back on. The Enable Preview option shows a wireframe representation of the resulting fillet and clicking on the magnifying glass next to it will show an actual preview of the blend. After selecting an edge, you can also vary the radius of the blend along the edge. You can do this by selecting points along the edge and entering different radii at those points. Multiple points can be selected and the percent arc length option allows input of a parameter to determine location of that point along the edge. You can either enter a value in one of the boxes or drag the green anchor to move the point along the edge. Note that the point will no longer be associative if you manually move its location by dragging the anchor. To set the size of a variable radius at this point, you can either drag the handles on screen or use the dialog data entry fields. Follow each parameter value by pressing the return key. After inputting points and choosing apply, the blend will be created to fit smoothly through the radii you have defined. The third option in the dialog box creates setbacks. Setbacks are added to a blend corner to apply additional shaping. You can use setbacks to create ball nose blends on corners. You must already have specified blends, whether constant or variable, for at least three edges of a vertex before you can use this option. Selecting the vertex will display three drag handles at the corner vertex, one for each of the three points that define the setback. At first, the three setback points are at equal distances from the vertex giving the corner blend a constant radius. You can change the amount of curvature along any of the directions by dragging the handles on screen or entering values into the dialog box. The fourth option for creating edge blends is the stop short option. This command does just as it sounds, stops an edge blend short along its edge. After selecting the edge you would like to stop short from, you can drag the handle on screen or enter a value for the percentage of the line to stop short of. You cannot drag the stop short point across an edge vertex onto another edge. Multiple stop short points can be selected and applied at one time. These points can also be deleted if desired from the dialog box. Another option found in the Detail Feature menu is Chamfer. Chamfers are similar to edge blends but are linear cuts rather than curved surfaces. There are three kinds of chamfers as denoted in the input options in the dialog box. The first is symmetric offsets. 
For this option, you must first select edges to chamfer, which all belong to the same body. Then simply specify the offset value. This is the distance from the edge to where you wish the cut to begin on the face of the body. You can also use asymmetric offsets, which allow you to specify an offset value in both directions from the selected edge. The final option is offset and angle, which allows you to specify an offset in one direction along with a cutting angle through which the chamfer will be made. Grooves let you create a cut along the circumference of a cylindrical feature. The Groove command is found in the Insert Design Features menu. There are three types of grooves. The first, rectangular, leaves sharp 90 degree corners along the cut. To use this command, you must first specify a cylindrical placement face. You may select either an internal or external cylindrical feature. You must then specify a groove diameter, which will define the depth of the cut depending on how thick your cylindrical placement face is. The diameter will be the inner diameter if you are creating an external groove, or the outer diameter for an internal groove. You must then also choose the width of the cut as measured along the axis of the selected cylindrical face. A preview will then appear showing the location of the groove. You can position the groove by selecting an edge of the target body and an edge of the previewed groove object and entering a value for the distance between these edges. This value may be negative depending on the edges selected. Ball end grooves are much the same as rectangular grooves but leave a full radius along the bottom of the groove. For this option, you will be prompted to specify a ball diameter in addition to groove diameter. The ball diameter will determine the width of the groove. The third type is the U groove, which allows you to specify the radii in corners of the groove. This allows you to have a groove with corner radii somewhere between that of the rectangular and ball end grooves. This option requires input of a corner radius, which will be the internal blend radius of the groove.